Now, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And for the great tyranny and wickedness rising worldwide, I am the reaction. You are the reaction. We are the resistance to this tyranny. So today, I just want to remember all of those that came before us across the continents of this world over thousands of years who stood up for the individual and who had uh, righteousness in their heart and who wanted to do good. Not that any of us are perfect, we're all desperately wicked in one way or another, but whose hearts are right and who wanted to build a better civilization and a better society. And all of you that are here today and all of you that are watching out there. In the final equation, you have decided which side you're on. And this whole life is very fleeting, very short, as Shakespeare said, out, out, brief candle. What matters is our souls. What matters is what side of history we're on. So I salute all of you that have chosen to be on the right side of history. I salute the fighters against adversity who did the right thing and stood up and spoke out against the gangs of criminals and control freaks that have infested our civilization for thousands upon thousands of years. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that history, uh, really in broad strokes because history is so, so complex. You can study one period of one nation's history and read a thousand books about it and get lost in all of the different personalities and things that happened at that time. But I wanted to go over some broad strokes to define what the Illuminati is and what their plan is for civilization, for society, for you and your family versus the society and civilization that we can build if we simply put out those alternate ideas and run them up against the globalist. Instead of just falling down and acting like the world is theirs and that we're supposed to stand down. We are to occupy. We are to be the salt of the earth. And so again, I salute you for being here and all of you that are out there watching because you are the salt of the earth and the light out there against this darkness. Now, I want to be clear. Some people hear what I talk about and they say, this is scary. This guy's trying to scare us. And I realize that that is a blind spot that I've had. But that's not a crowd I'm really even trying to talk to, so it doesn't matter. I, when I see corruption, when I see thugs, when I see organized crime and government or corporations are on the streets, I want to organize good people against it. My very instinct is to stand against it, to try to wake up as many people as I possibly can. But for a lot of people who've been taught they have no power, they get really scared. And they think, man, hearing about this somehow is almost like conjuring it or manifesting it in the world. That's not how things really work, ladies and gentlemen. You can think of something, but then you've got to go out and take action to build it or do it. You just don't imagine it, and then it suddenly pops into view. Now, the globalists have their brainwashing systems. They can put out an idea long enough to get us to buy into it, so we go out and build it for them. But there's no magic in that. It's simply propaganda or brainwashing. We're going to be talking about that here today. But we can build the world we want. Nineveh was going to be destroyed, and it's a great parable, a great allegory to today. It was going to be destroyed within a few weeks, but they listened to God's messenger. They listened to Jonas, who had to go through his own trials, and so they were given a hundred-year reprieve, and it's the same thing. I hope the New World Order doesn't come fully into power because it is going to kill the majority of people on the planet or die trying. It is going to have the rise of the machines, the whole nine yards. You will see it unfold. And I hope that I can struggle as much as I can to resist it coming into place now. Because if we don't do that, I will assure you, when we stand before God and say, hey, I was a Christian, I went to church, God's going to say, you didn't stand up against the New World Order. You didn't stand up for the kids that are shooting full of deadly vaccines. You didn't even stand up to your scumbag mayor in Austin who's putting poison fluoride in the water. I don't know you. That's what's going to happen. God hates a coward. And that's, again, why I salute the people that are here today. Because you are here in defiance of this open, dehumanizing tyranny. So I will say this. Some people hear what I have to say and it's scary and they think, this guy's trying to scare me. No, I'm trying to warn them. Because if there's a pit out your back door, 
and, and you're going to fall and break your leg in it, some 20-foot deep you know, sinkhole that formed the day before. If I come over and tell you, hey, neighbor, there's a sinkhole out back. Watch out you know, when you walk out there to feed your chickens or whatever. I'm not fear-mongering. I'm warning them about something that's happened. If I see my neighbor's house on fire, and I come to them and say, hey, uh, I called the fire department. There's flames shooting out of your second story up there. I'm not fear-mongering. I'm doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Basic survival instinct. I want to face a threat with my eyes open. Throughout history, there have been small percentages of people when they're under threat, especially children, who can blame them, who will close their eyes and curl up in a ball. And sometimes that works. Might work with a grizzly bear, but it's not going to work with the New World Order. They want you to curl up in a ball so they can take their time with you. And they'll move on from somebody standing up on their hind legs against them and find somebody that will fall down like a sheep in front of them. We're supposed to be sheep before God and God's edicts, and God then will take care of us. Not sheep before the New World Order and its armies of wolves. It's that simple. And so I say to people out there that live in fear, now is the time to open your eyes. The threat is there. Closing your eyes, sticking your head in the sand, does not protect you from those threats. Only facing it. Uh, to paraphrase Patrick Henry, he said, I would know the whole truth and make preparation for it. No matter how bad it is, because the war has already begun, why stand we idly here? The war is going on against all of free humanity and anyone who doesn't want to give up their soul and give up their free will. Because this is a war against free will. 110%. And never forget that. That is the most important thing to understand. Because if they can take your intellect and have you shut down your survival instinct and shut down your connection to your Creator, it's over. You're already dead. They've got you. So my message is to people out there, you should be afraid of not resisting this because your laying down is what is allowing to bring this to fruition. And I love how the cowards sit there and think they're part of the power structure and defend the new world order and defend all the evils as everything we've warned about year after year after year comes true exactly as we break it down. Because the globalists are so arrogant they've told us what they're going to do. All we're doing is telling you what they said they would do and showing you where they said it. Tex earlier was reading Why the Future Doesn't Need Us from like 13 years ago in Wired Magazine, Bill Joy. He goes, I go to a conference of 200 computer company owners, billionaires, and they go, well, do we kill everybody or do we let them play video games all day? And the answer was, kill everybody! That's not fear-mongering to tell you what he wrote in a magazine telling you what they were talking about. That's saying, let's get organized and let's decide to build a good, humane, decent, wholesome culture based on truth and justice, not a culture based on fraud and lies and whoever in the government has the most guns can trample over us and enslave us. Let's have a future based on freedom. And again, I started out here by saluting you and those out there and those that came before us. But you think about, there were books written that I've read and covered on air that were written back in 1898 and stuff about the plan by global European bankers to come in and set up a central bank called a federal bank and how they were going to then bankrupt everybody and take the country into bondage. And Thomas Jefferson talked about it 100 years uh, before that, on and on and on. And it all came true because they were in these meetings. One of these guys was a banker who wrote a book about it. Uh, there's so many examples of this. And then in 1913, you read the congressional record. It's like, you know, Alex Jones and Tex Mars or Jim Mars was there. It was all about how we were being conquered by a money power, how an outside group would control the issuance of currency and credit and would buy up the planet. And that's what happened. So think about all the people that said they're going to start abolishing sovereignty. They're going to put our military under UN and NATO. Now it's all happened but announced in Congress. They're going to have start breaking up the family and saying that parents uh, aren't the parents. Now MSNBC runs commercials basically saying parenthood is bad. All of this is over the top. So people 60 years ago would see the John Birch Society talk about it and think that's crazy, even though they have the source documents. But now it's all happening. So again, don't expect the world 
and the new world order and this whole system of sickos to, to go, wow, you were right. Uh, you told the truth. Man, you, here's a Pulitzer Prize. They're going to attack us that much stronger. They are going to intensify these operations tenfold because we are the resistance. We are the people that know. You are the people that have studied this. You are the people because of your family, your upbringing, your connection to God. Whatever reason, we're concerned about this. And you are the leaders. You are the resistance. There's no other you know, room of people out there waiting to fight this. It's us. Look in the mirror. It's up to us to stand against this. And if we will stand up against this, it will fall. But through the process of its, its collapse, it will bring incredible destruction to this planet. But it's going to be much less than the destruction that will come if we completely give in to this evil. So this is a massive time that we've entered, and it's only going to get more intense. This is the time people have written about for thousands of years that we're entering right now. And it's only going to get more and more insane, more and more crazy, where reality itself seems like it's been turned on its head. And when the world laughs at you and arrogantly you know, calls for you to be arrested, remember how pathetic these slaves are, how their intellects and souls and minds have been stolen. These are victims who were set in front of the television set from the age you know, of six months drooling in their dirty diapers to be programmed by the one-eyed New World Order system. Their children were given to the fires of Moloch. These are victims, so don't let them laughing at you and even persecuting you make you angry. Thank God that you at least are awake and, and know what's happening. Because your soul and your free will is outside their grasp. You are now above them. You are now outside of their realm. And all we need to do is try to reach into that realm to try to save as many of these people from the New World Order system as we can. And that is our mission. And that is why it's so important that we work tirelessly in this fight. And when we do the right thing and step up and take action, God will aid us and, and doors will open up for us when we're doing the right thing and not living in fear. Break the chains of fear and throw yourself against the new world order and you will see these devils run. So the American patriots were right. We stand on their shoulders and we salute them. Uh, I mean, nowadays people are awake massively to the shadow government, the tyranny, the NSA spying, the government narcotics trafficking, the occultism of the elite. The, the people are awake right now more than they've ever been, and it's only going to intensify. Think about people that labored 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 20 years ago, when if you said the Federal Reserve was private, and try to show people the shareholders, you would be laughed at and called an insane person. Or just five years ago, the New York Times would say, there is no Bilderberg Group. And Alex Jones, they actually wrote this, was in a parking lot in Virginia imagining sedans and helicopters and police, even though we had video of it. They were discrediting themselves, only speaking to their programmed masses who themselves are afraid and know they're being lied to, but cling on to that lie like a life preserver in the North Atlantic from the freezing truth. Think about that. Think about that. They, they buy into the most simple propaganda because it, it makes them feel comfortable. And again, these are pathetic victims. Don't feel bad when, when groups in the crowd or the establishment laugh at you because they are spiritually and culturally blind. They have bought into this culture of death. Any form of independence is under attack because it doesn't fit in to this programmed systematic robotic system that the Illuminati want to create. Again, that attack on your free will. So that's why when you turn on any sitcom or any major drama or any cop show, the bad guys, or if you go buy the latest military video game, the bad guys are patriot, conservative, libertarian, Christians, returning veterans, anti-Illuminati in the fetters. I'm thinking M17 or my micro Uzi with a silencer. 
you ex-military? I don't know. We're better than that. They were both raised by militia. Well, constitutional extremists, to, to be accurate. So any form of independence is seen as an enemy by this tyranny. And that's why we need more independence. Food independence. Uh, local small churches that aren't under government control independence not fighting with your husband or wife spending more time with your children explaining to them how the system is corrupt and a threat they genetically and culturally already know this from all the instincts God gave us and all the things our ancestors went through they'll immediately start behaving better if you explain to them that the system wants to prey on them that's why the system wants to break that parent-child connection, to break that ancient cycle that goes back thousands of years. I want to give a brief history to understand our enemy of the takeover. And there have been many different empires, many different permutations of them, going back to Egypt and Babylon and Greece and the 5,000 plus year old empires that came uh, out of China. But to boil it all down, the synthesis of those technologies were taken into Rome before the fall of the Roman Empire in 410, the complete fall of it, and was split off into the two Roman Empires, the Byzantine and the Old Roman Empire. And if you look at those systems, they were then taken, those systems of cultural control, and taken to Scotland, taken to England, taken to France. And an artificial dark age was actually brought in for more than a thousand years to try to perfect turning humans into cattle. But that failed. And so everything we see now is the system trying to bring in with technology what, what has already been attempted before. Take the French Revolution, uh, really an Illuminati twisted copy of ours, where they tried to go to a nine day work week, they tried to abolish the seasons, they tried to abolish families, but it didn't work and the French rebelled against it, even though hundreds of thousands were killed. It's the same thing. The, the, the globalists want to try to play God. And to do that, they have to get rid of the normal human systems that our Creator gave us. That's why they're at war with the natural, wholesome order that has created all the prosperity that we've ever seen. As soon as you deviate from that, everything collapses, everything unravels. That's a fact. So why are they obsessed with bringing that in? Because they are fundamentally at odds with the creator of this creation. And that's in their own words. And so that's why they hate a healthy, happy family. That's why they hate a healthy, happy marriage. That's why they hate it if you're healthy and want to put additives in the food and GMO and vaccines on record to cripple you so that they can have satisfaction out of your pain and suffering. That's who these people are. That's who they are. That's what they stand for. That's their fruits. You fast forward to the British East India Company founded in and around 1612, Cicero 1612. And this is really the current model we're under now. A private corporate group that the government pays and who is exempt from laws, has diplomatic immunity, and controls armies. And that's what it is. A giant corporate global government that, like a glove, puts the government onto its hand. The government isn't the iron fist. The iron fist is inside the velvet glove with all its propaganda and all its uh, baloney about how it cares about you. It is within that velvet glove. And so anytime the people rebel against the iron fist crushing them, they just remove that soiled glove and put another glove back on. Get rid of Bush, put in Obama. Get rid of Obama, put in the next puppet, Jeb Bush or whoever it is. This is the key to the mystery religions. Going back to Egypt, they would have the so-called you know, priesthood of the, of the dark knowledge and the priesthood of the light knowledge. And they would say, oh, we're bringing balance to everything. But, oh, the Pharaoh's God and the priest class was really trying to set themselves up as God. If you want to understand this, again, I just brought brushes here. And so they studied astronomy and they studied uh, agriculture and they studied construction. And all of this was valuable information, but not as valuable as the proto-psychology and psychiatry and anthropology and sociology that they wrote down in books of how to control and manipulate fellow humans to make us basically animals that they could program. 
So if you want to know what the Illuminati is, it's simply ancient technologies of control brought forward into the Roman Empire, brought forward then through the Dark Ages into Europe, and then via infighting between the Catholic Church and the Knights Templars who had broken off using the technology to the UK, it becomes the new power axis of the Illuminati or two different feuding Illuminati arms Hydras with each other. And again, the devil uses competition within his own systems. So you have competing New World Order organizations using different methodology, but generally the same methodology. And when one develops some new technology, the other immediately steals it and uses it. So you have a form of demonic evolution, hyper evolution, moving forward in these systems and technologies that can then be adopted by other groups. And if a new subgroup rises up, it is then brought into the seat of power or as a power slave. The American empire isn't so much an empire as we are the giant power slave to carry out these programs for the New World Order. But let me go back to this basic synopsis here. In the brief history of their takeover, they do this region by region. They try to get people to buy in, to letting a group in, or they militarily come in. That's why they love to prey on groups that aren't advanced technologically because they can't resist. But if you're more technologically advanced, they'll come in and take over and simply use you in an exploitation phase. And when I bring this up, many of you probably would have read about this in communist doctrine, how once the communists in phase two, once they get a beachhead in the country and they're able to take over its central government, they then go into the exploitation phase of using the capital, the treasure, the ingenuity, the science of the nation to take over the neighboring nation or project power against another country. And then if they need to stage a terror attack uh, or a false flag as a pretext to get that country or group or tribe behind fighting the next tribe, that will be done. And many times in the full spectrum dominance, you will have the globalists funding all the sides so that within the war they've organized for both sides, out of that you get a impoverishment, a destruction of infrastructure, and the wealth being transferred to the offshore piratical globalist crime syndicate. So again, it's a continual war against any independent wealth, any form of independence that they don't control. The object is to go in and wreck Iraq. The object is to go in and wreck Pakistan. The object is to come to America and deindustrialize us and wreck us. The object is to tell Africa, you can't have air conditioning in your cars because you having a good life hurts the earth. By the way, let me get on this Air Force One jet. See you later. If everybody's raising living standards to the point where everybody's got a car and everybody's got air conditioning and everybody's got a big house, uh, well, the planet will boil over. It's about having you love your servitude, love the fact that you're supposedly dirty and bad. But, but the people on the red carpet, they're like gods who come down out of the sky on their jet copters or their Air Force One. And the television tells you to worship them and you'd be fulfilled if you were just like them. But you're not because you're just a dirty peasant who's hurting the earth. That's the current corporate globalist Royal Institute of International Affairs Council on Foreign Relations model where they come in with their globalist financing out of nothing and basically begin to buy off the infrastructure and leadership uh, of the country from banking to academia to media to uh, cultural icons, the arts. They finance it all with fiat garbage and literally get the world via their giant uh, con artist bubble. Then once they've gotten into the nation, they run into the exploitation phase to then move forward and take over surrounding areas. And then once they've finally done that, they then accelerate the collapse of the country. They've totally sucked dry and then pose as saviors as they collapse the country. They then pose as saviors having the people transfer their wealth, their energy, everything they've got to them just to be part of the inner circle culturally that doesn't go down with the ship. So then they're able to knock out the nouveau riche, the new wealth, uh, the people that were independently intelligent and successful that they weren't able to shut down through rigged taxation and, and, and uh, you know, insider deals. They then get that group to fully get on board with them and the globalists then tend to move to the next country or next area of exploitation. They will go to the strongest area that has the most wealth, the strongest people, the most warlike people, 
to then gear that country up for war and economic warfare to take over the next nation. If they invade or take over a country just for its resources, but the people are already very, very poor and don't have anything that they can exploit, they exterminate them. They hire the neighboring tribe to kill them or they cut off the resources. And then, while the UN troops are machine gunning and burning and killing in mass graves, it always comes out later, they're on TV with all the supermodels saying, give us money and we'll help all these starving Africans over here. They won't tell you, by the way, our UN back guerrilla forces drove these people out of their ancestral area uh, uh, into this mountainous desert region and they're all starving to death now because we just drove a million of them into the desert. No, they sit there and get housewives and, 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 and men and, and a, a community groups to send them money to sit there and help the little kids being eaten by a buzzard. Oh, look, this vulture is eating a little kid. Send us money. And then it comes out. Don't help that kid. Move on. Just like it comes out with Red Cross, United Way, almost none of the money when there's a disaster goes to anything but more advertising to get more money. Because it's not just that they're greedy, they don't want to help you. They want you bankrupt. They want you on your knees because that's what gives them more power. The weaker you are, the stronger they are. That's how their sick brains work. And again, this is scary stuff, but if you study this, this is the reality of what these people have done over and over again. And it's the understanding of how bad these globalists are that will allow us to have a chance to turn this around. They come in, take over the government, establish a system where they're exempt from the laws, they have diplomatic immunity, and they can issue the currency and credit and basically buy up the world for absolutely nothing once that's in place, they then take over the country incrementally because now they have an unfair trade advantage. They set up a secret police to be able to oppress the population because they know that people who have studied history are going to recognize the signs and try to block it. They're going to say it doesn't exist and people that talk about it are crazy. But once it's established, as we're now seeing, it come to about 80% fruition, okay, there is a world government, but it's all being done for your own good. And also within this ancient system of the Illuminati, they like to set up their own cities or small country sub-districts that are exempt and above the law. And you look at the District of Columbia uh, in the last hundred years or so operating as its own above the law district and the members of Congress exempting themselves from the law. Going back 400 years or more, you look at England and the city of London within London, the financial district, above the law. Uh, unable to be taxed because that's the deal they have with the crown who they put in power. You look at the Vatican, its own city that gets power from Rome and for 50 years has refused to pay their power bill and no one can force them to pay it because they're sovereign. And not only does sovereign mean to these people that you can't tell me what to do, you're going to give me free power as a tax on top of the public, just like the $85 billion a month we're forced to give to foreign offshore banks. And when Congress under QE3 asks who's getting it, they're told by the president to basically go to hell. You see how all of this is going on while we're busy fighting with each other over all these issues they throw out. They are just looting and robbing the entire world. So I wanted to list some of the programs. Uh, you can look at Israel set up above the law, uh, outside of the United Nations program that some of Israel's supporters helped establish so that people can then be above the law who commit crimes worldwide and go there. Uh, you look at the United Nations, the mother of all of it, set up by the Rockefellers, above the law, diplomatic immunity, can go around murdering whoever they want worldwide. And there are so many other examples of this that you'll see of these artificial command bases that Global has set up inside countries, inside regions, to then launch their operations against free humanity and then run back into these organizations so that the public cannot rally against them and resist them. This is basically what's happening, and it's just a form of sophisticated gangsterism where the gangsters have the technology of human control and social engineering on their side. But once we open source this information to good people out there to understand these programs, then it becomes game over for the parasites. 
And as things get worse and worse underneath this parasitical system, the people that have been lazy or dumbed down who don't want to learn about what's happening are going to be forced to learn what's happened. And so as the globalists try to carry out all these crimes against humanity, we're going to be here exposing them every step of the way. They're not going to do this in a vacuum. You can resist tyranny now. It's so robotic. And their slaves are so robotic and so dumbed down that they don't even see you when you're out there resisting them or exposing them or sabotaging them politically. So it cuts both ways. They've dumbed down the public and put them in a trance state so they can control them. Well, imagine what we can do against the New World Order in resistance when their people have never had any human contact. People, you know, the general zombie thinks it's really cool to not care about anybody but themselves. Imagine when you actually try to give someone human contact. In many cases, it will have them open up and awaken. I've got a friend who likes to, he's a, he's a mailman, and he likes to visit nursing homes that God put on his heart about a decade ago. And he said, he'll go into these nursing homes, these people can't even talk, and the nursing homes will say, hey, leave them alone, they don't talk. And with a, a few visits, these people are awake, these people are excited, these people are talking. He comes back and visits them the next time, and they're in a suit and tie, you know, ready to you know, get taken down to a restaurant to eat some food. And a lot of times, then the nursing home says, stop coming and visiting them with your wife. We don't want the trouble of having these people running around here. But see, it's the same thing for the general public. It's the exact same thing. They, we are like those people in a nursing home that nobody's given attention to. And if you go out and give people attention, and if you spread the word, you will see that humanity begin to shine back through them. And that's the goal we all have. You want to help somebody? It might mean going once a week and bringing people cookies at a nursing home or taking your dog in to see them. It might mean helping your neighbor move. It might mean uh, you know, simply doing the right thing. Being good is what these people hate because it hurts them. That's what stands up against them, is just doing little good things, being good again. Good people standing up and taking action will drive these globalists out. Look at America, not perfect, and they certainly demonized it because they don't like the basic ideas that are there that scare these tyrants so much. But if you look at the U.S., real estate-wise, not that big of a country. I know they put it big on the maps, but if you look at a world map that's proportionate and actually shows how big the U.S. is, it's, it's, it's a, a medium-sized country. And the arable resources and things aren't even you know, that good compared to something like uh, Western Europe in many cases. But why did the United States become the most successful nation in the world? Why did the United States have the highest education standards in the world, the most inventions, the uh, longest lived in many regions of the country. We were number one in basically almost everything until about the 1950s or so. And then the long decline started there because of the incredible trust of the social engineers. So as soon as we left the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Christian ideals, the Puritan, Puritanical ideas that were established here in this country, even if they were never fully implemented, just that idea made us the most wealthy country in the world. And that's why the New World Order globalists came here and began to take it over, because they saw that engine. Anywhere the globalists get control, you get the lowest IQs, the lowest education, the most unhealthy people, the highest rates of cancer. You get all of the curses of living under the tyranny. And it's not some magical curse. It's the curse of having horrible control freak murderers in control of the nation who will go out and poison your food because they like to see you stumbling around sick, not knowing what hit you. And your good heart can't imagine that somebody would do something like that to you. It's time to realize who these people are and the crimes they've committed and set a fire the brush fires of liberty everywhere to bring this scum to justice. So we know, we know the new world order is bad, even if somebody doesn't believe in God. Hey, you don't want to believe in this new world order and all this fake, sicky, sweet package trendiness because just like a fishing lure, it looks like a big old juicy minnow. It looks like a big old juicy purple worm to a bass. It's not. It's artificial and it's got barbs in it. 
And that's what this new world order is. It's dangled out there like it looks pretty, like it looks tasty, it looks delicious, it looks fun, it's going to be wonderful, but you bite into it, it's got big old treble hooks in it. And that's what we got to point out to people. Do you like the fruits of the new world order? Because let me tell you, if you like the way things are going now, if you like autism from 1 in 30,000 to 1 in 50 now, the last 20 years, if you like cancer rates in children up over 10,000%, if you like diabetes up several thousand percent, if you like breast cancer up 3,000%, if you like IQs dropping 20 something percent, if you like going from the greatest saving nation in the world to the greatest debtor nation in the world overnight, if you like that, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because if you like Stalin, Hitler, Mao, and all the other mass murderers of history, get ready, because that's what you're going to get real soon if this train keeps on pulling into the station. We want to turn this new world order around right now. We know where it goes. We don't like what comes out of the other end of it. We don't like what this tree grows. Cut that tree down and burn it. That's what we need to do. We need to cut the new world order down and burn it. And burn its seeds and get rid of it forever. Because these people are a curse on humanity. They just learn how perception works. They learn tricks. They learn semantical games. But hey, when you know something's producing bad, it doesn't matter if it's smiling at you. You need to get rid of it. And it's that simple. We don't want the New World Order. We don't want globalism. We don't want collectivism. We know it's bad. We know it doesn't work. And we want to see it be destroyed. Yes. And we destroy it by withdrawing our consent from it. By voting with our dollars. By supporting local groups. By supporting organic groups. By supporting churches that tell the truth. By withdrawing your consent every way you can from this system, you will defeat it. And by verbally exposing it with our committees of correspondence, just as our forebearers did, listing their crimes, showing their crimes. They spent all day on TV and billboards and press talking about how bad the citizens are and how bad the people are and how, how there's all these drugs out there and how the terrorists are out there. The government's on record now running the terrorists. The government's on record shipping in the narcotics. And just keep hammering that. You're the bad guys. Stop acting like you're the good guys. All you're going to do is help this evil fully manifest itself the longer you live in denial. And so many people that defend the system now, they don't defend it out of feeling like they're part of the power structure anymore. In the past, they would defend it because they felt like they were part of the system and they're winners. Now they defend it out of fear. And that's a big victory we've had. We've gone from having them be willing participants in the destruction of humanity to now being scared prisoners within the system. And now they're one step closer to a jailbreak. You see, we're winning. Congress has a 9% approval rating, a 10% approval rating. Main Street Media is imploding. Obama lost 17% in the Gallup poll of his uh, useful idiot under 30s. And you look at every other number. Liberty is becoming popular. Tyranny is becoming unpopular. So they'll send in their operatives to pose as liberty lovers, to pose as liberty leaders, to then do nothing but cause infighting and to criticize other people that are fighting the New World Order. And they'll do it by name, just like Cass Sunstein at the White House said, to sow dissension. Don't be involved in dissension, nitpicking, backstabbing, seeing who could do a better job, or I like this guy, or I like that guy. You get out there, and you be leaders, and you fight tyranny, and we'll focus on the New World Order, and the Federal Reserve, and the Rothschilds, and the Rockefellers, and the Queen of England, and we will expose them. And then after we've dealt with them, then we can debate who we support and who we like. But we sure know we don't like the people that are running this planet right now. Yeah. These people... The cutting edge of the New World Order, they call themselves progressives. Many of them useful idiots who really have drunk the Kool-Aid. They really think that they are progressive, that they are progressing. While Obama goes, shouldn't have light bulbs, shouldn't have air conditioning, shouldn't have a good way of life. It's bad for the earth. While the globalists are destroying the earth with the GMO and all the rest of it trying to play God. It's so hollow. But still the idea, you're bad. It's cool for you to have less. While the bankers that are financing all this give themselves, you know, $5 billion bonuses a year. That's right. Yeah. 
I mean, I would start to believe them, even if the science is a fraud, we know they're lying, if Obama didn't have air conditioning and uh, all these globalists sold everything they had and walked around in sackcloth, but they don't. They just build bigger and bigger palaces. They just take more and more species and splice them together that we know is hurting the earth because they hate God's creation. And everything they do is to try to kill, steal, and destroy. If you weren't a Bible-believing Christian before, you better be now because everything these people are doing, they read Revelations and use it as an instruction manual. They read 1984 and use it as an instruction manual. So whether, whether the Bible's real or not, I know it's real. The issue is, it doesn't matter. Because these people, if there's a devil, they fit the bill. I mean, there's the devil right there. It's the New World Order. And the more I study it, the more I look at it, and all its intricacies and the spirit of it that animates all its systems, it is an animating force of evil. There is an animating force giving power unto this. But we have the God of the universe animating us. And all we've got to do is ask God to use us as vessels against this tyranny. Amen. And to not fear the new world order that can kill our body. But God that can damn us to hell forever. Yes, right. So at its core, it is a satanic conspiracy at war with all of God's creations. And it is at war with real progress. All the good things that come out of a free and open society where people are virtuous and stand up, the New World Order doesn't like that because you get a little bit uppity when you're doing well and you don't want to serve the system. It wants to be able to give you everything you've got so that you will conform with what it believes. Right. Towards the end of establishing a world technotronic global government on, the, on record that plans to kill us all with bioweapons, so the globalists can go crawl into their underground bunkers and come back out and inherit the life extension technologies and the nanotech and all the rest of it. And I say to these people, just as Texan did his speech, do you really think the new world order, the, the, the God of this world, the power of this world, is, is, is going to give you all these things when its whole desire is to destroy creation itself out of the absolute hate of life? Do you really think you're ever going to taste any of this? The answer is you're not going to taste any of it. You have been completely conned. And a lot of these people that serve the New World Order, because I've talked to them off record, they know that, but they're so scared, they feel like they've gone so far, they're just going to try to enjoy what they've got here, living in this life, before it all gets pushed over the edge, and that's why they're clamoring for the life extension technologies, and so greedy and angry at all of us, the peasants eating their food, and using their resources, because they were given this world, they stole this world, and we're like weevils in in the pantry eating their grain. Right. They want us out of the way. Well, you know what? They're the ones that have started the fight. I want them out of the way. Yeah. And we're going to do that not through covert weapons and the food and the water and the culture. We're going to do that openly with the truth that trumps all of their lies. And we're going to take our culture and society back. And the globalists can go stay with each other like a bunch of zombies on some island and tear each other apart. Amen. Because vampires can't feed off vampires. And I'm sick of these vampires and all their propaganda. I want to see them driven into the sea. The ultimate power trip is what I call Ray Kurzweil. He said in his latest book, he said, I don't believe in God yet, but I intend to become the first God. And that he's going to bring his father back too. And, and I saw him in this documentary saying the same stuff that was in his book, staring at photos of his dad and his dad's papers, going, I'm, I'm going to resurrect him with this. It was kind of sad to see here's this high priest of the Illuminati who actually is believing all this. And, and I'm going to bring my dad back. I, I love him. I, I, uh, that's like saying the sands at the Sahara Desert would put a wristwatch together. The old thing of saying evolution, supposedly, uh, you, know, you know, came from some amino acids in the Pacific Ocean or something billions of years ago. It is so ridiculous to watch these people and to realize how cut off they are from God's creation. And it, 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 it's so sad. So all they know, like a person buried alive, is to froth and try to dig their way out. 
And they see us as the soil that's on top of them. They believe that God's creation and people trying to be good and decent and honorable is what's holding them up. They believe if we just get out of the way, their utopia could come into view. Take the Earth First Battalion, where they were saying, we are the white horse. We will bring judgment on the world. Humanity is bad. We need to kill everybody. And then they call it liberal and have guys in the movie with flowers in their hair. When it's the complete opposite. They have this trendy, fake affectation on the surface, but that is nothing but camouflage with these people. All they know is, I'm going to kill people. That's the ultimate thrill to them. And they don't want to kill bad people that are hurting innocents. They want to kill anyone who is not going along with their system. Because you're like a big bright white light in the dark to them and they want to extinguish you. That's why these two things aren't going to ever mix together. They tell you live in harmony with them. That just means you need to submit to them. You need to turn yourself over to them. They're never going to compromise with us. We don't give up something and they give up something. We give up something. We give up something. We give up something until we fall off the cliff. That's what's happening here. But then you look at the architecture of the technology the New World Order has been putting in place. All of it dehumanizes. All of it has back doors to spy on us. All of it, when it could have a good use, has been twisted to try to dominate us and lower our IQs and lower our perception, lower our horizons. Right. Because this is a system that has a God at the head of it that is inherently wicked. There's no making a deal with this devil. In a culture that's in a deep sleep, in a culture that is in a deep coma, that is the only thing that is going to wake them up is being loud, is being aggressive. Yeah. The system's always be calm, be nice. That's how you're credible. But notice they're not calm and nice. That's right. they, they, they're invading countries. They're killing millions. They're brutalizing you. You ask a question of one of their brainwashed police, not all of them, but the ones they brainwashed, they'll taser you. Was that polite? Was that how you got things done? So I'm not saying be violent. I'm saying be aggressive with these people. And I don't do it on purpose and I go on Piers Morgan or, or BBC television and start yelling at these people. But when they sit there and lie and go, there's nothing in the water to hurt you. And I've got over a thousand studies, 24 studies from Harvard last year alone of massive IQ reduction, massive increases in cancer. I get mad and say, how dare you say I'm a liar about poison in the water? I want it out of there. We're not gonna get that out of there that they put in there to dumb us down so they have an unfair advantage against us like drugging the other guy you're about to box. It's the same thing. These people should be executed after a trial by jury for putting that in the water. We shouldn't, oh, Alex, don't raise your voice to them. Paul Revere rode around on a horse saying, get your guns, get ready to start killing people. And we're like, well, that's Paul Revere. We salute him. But you know, that Alex Jones, he raised his voice once. That's wrong. And again, I'm not calling for going out and shooting people because we're peacefully winning this fight. And we are going to turn this around. But if there are foreign armies marching in to take us to the FEMA camps, we don't have a right. We have a duty to resist it. And that's what the Second Amendment is there for. But we're losing if we have to go to that. And, and then we may win if that happens, but that's not where we want to go. They want to go there. They're pushing for that. We want to maintain a peaceful stance as long as we can. And then if we are offensively attacked, we have a right and a duty to resist it. You have to choose that situation. If you're all alone, they're going to spin the story. You don't have any way to get the truth out. You, you've got to defend yourself. If I'm in public, the New World Order is going to kill me. I'll let them kill me. Because I want everybody to see that, to see who the bad guy is. So you have to choose your battles. But the bottom line is, this is an epic time that we're in. This is the most historic time in all of human development that we are now entering. And I don't want to ever hear people out there that are watching say, oh, I'm bored, or there's nothing going on, or there's nothing on TV. The greatest show on earth is going on outside your television. It's called reality. And we're on a planet hurtling through space, 
dealing with satanic forces that want to try to override humanity and bring in the reign of machines that they believe they're going to merge with and they're openly saying they plan to take all our jobs away, make us dependent to socially engineer us as a means towards getting the handcuffs on us politically and economically and militarily so they can execute us. Now, you'd be insane to not resist that. You'd be crazy to try to sell out to it, believing this crazy plan is actually going to work, even if you were evil. This flies in the face of everything we've ever been. And if we let this evil win, we sell out all of our ancestors that stood against tyranny and that, and that taught us what was right and that brought humanity and culture forward. So what we're doing is bigger than just our lives today. It's about our ancestors. It's about those of us today. It's about our children and their grandchildren and the continuum that is humanity. And when you realize that, there's no fear anymore. We can't turn our world and our society over to a bunch of inbred, degenerate devil worshippers. It is our job to stand up and awaken and awaken others and resist the new world order until the end. Bottom line, liberty is rising. Humanity is rising. This is our generation's great test. And I'm here to tell you, this is a special generation. Everyone who's alive right now, the last three generations of the generation being born now, we are at the beginning, the crossroads, the jump point, the event horizon of the most important time in all of creation. you got front row seats to incredible science fiction that you're living and you're not just in the seats you're in the arena whether you know it or not so take your destiny to be leaders stand against the new world order stand with your ancestors and most importantly stand with god for life truth and justice fearlessly